Interested in performing a DIY task around the house? You may want to wait. Today we tell you what simple projects could be releasing poisons around your household. So, you like jumping in the mud and getting dirty? Well, we've got the event for you. Coming up, details of a Mudapalooza event right here on Del Marva. And with spring just a day away, many of us are itching to get outside. But do you have what you really need to enjoy your outdoor space? We have some low maintenance, rust free solutions. And it's Tuesday. That means we're in the kitchen today with the chef from the Lazy River Saloon in Ocean City making a dish to delight you vegetable lovers. Del Marva Live starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Lisa Bryant. I'm Jimmy Hopple. Welcome to Del Marva Live from Historic Studio D. And uh, it's it's like, I don't know, the day before spring, right? Yes. Spring we're, is we're tomorrow. Like 14 hours. Oh my gosh. It's taking forever to get here. And yesterday we had will. snow. And it's supposed to be the coldest day. I, I, yeah. It's just crazy. It's Moving crazy. Swiftly along. <laughs> mm. It'll be here soon enough, and we'll all be complaining about how hot it is. <laughs> it is muggy. Yeah, and yeah. Dying, easy, hot, and humid. Yeah. Um, hey, have you gone out to see the number one movie in the country yet? Uh, Oz. Oz? No, I haven't seen Oz. Oh, Oz, the great and powerful. Well, look for Sussex County native actress Shannon Murray. There she is, right there. Wow. In this picture, she's with the director, Sam Raimi. Wow. Um, Murray can be seen in one of the pivotal opening scenes as the mother of the girl in the wheelchair. Now, if you already seen the movie, you know who I'm talking about. If not, you'll you'll see it. it. Yeah, look for her. But she uh, graduated from Sussex Central High School and has had a, a pretty nice career in directing and acting and doing all kinds of stuff in New York and Hollywood. Very so cool. congratulations to her. That is. Really I haven't very seen cool. it yet, but I want to. Awesome stuff. What is this about round two of, of The Voice? The, well, it's Maybe. actually round two of Smyrna's Got Smyrna's Voice. Smyrna's Got Voice, okay. Kids rock. Round two is this weekend. Right. Okay, they've already had round one, obviously. It's a popular vocal talent competition that will feature a group of 10 singers between the ages of 10 and 17. And they're from throughout central and southern Delaware. And this is really a big event. It's really competitive. Here are the details if you'd like to go. It's definitely worth it. Smyrna's Got Voice Kids Rock. It's this Saturday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Advanced tickets are $13. You can get a family four pack for $30. Um, if you want to buy tickets, there's a number 302 653 4236. It's at the Smyrna Opera House, by the way. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I, I was doing a little research on it, and it really is a, an interesting event that's been going on for a couple of years and very competitive. So, you know, they're going to be real good. Got voice, kids. I tell you what, I continue to be amazed at the talent that we have here on this peninsula. Oh, I know, I know. Every time we have a, have a singer or a band or we're musician in here, like, we're like, did you hear that? So, where, where did they come from? <laughs> yeah, so be sure to attend. You might see some of the talent before we do, and yeah. who knows, maybe they'll show up here. Mm -hmm. uh, work is underway to build the new Yacht Club in Ocean Pines, new $4.3 million facility. is expected to be open early next year. Here you see the uh, county, uh, the local officials, the county officials, the residents there for the groundbreaking. Here's my question. Mm -hmm. Would that be called a sand breaking? <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, uh, it's going on in, in Ocean Pines. And not Pines unless and you called another groundbreaking a dirt breaking. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I don't think these things through. I, <laughs> you you just, just spit it uh, out. I just spit it out. Uh, they're going to say they're going to keep the old yacht club. Can you call it an old yacht? Anyway, it's going to stay open until they get the new one up and running. So yeah. just in case you were worried about that, you you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, after Hurricane Sandy damaged their headquarters, Princess Anne police had to move into a former bank building. Mm, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to keep the building as their new headquarters because of, you guessed it, money. Mayor uh, Percy Purnell says there's an $80,000 overrun already, so there's nowhere to come up with the $300,000 to purchase a or $3,300 a month yeah, to rent. The, this is, this is, the damage. Th yeah, that's the uh, Crisfield Police Department. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yep, yeah. Yep, you're right. Yeah. So, but uh, anyway. It did a lot of damage. Sandy did a lot of damage when right. it came through. Yeah. So. They're going to hopefully get it all taken care of, but yeah, he's, he didn't even give it to the county council. He said executive privilege is mayor. I'm just going to say, no, we, no. we can't do it. They're asking mm -hmm. 300000 for the building. Right, and, and right. That kind of money. Well, it has been around for almost a century. Perhaps you have been to an event. We've talked about events a lot at uh, Dover's Mapledale Country Club. Here's the bad news. Even after all this time, looks like the uh, economy has had its way. They're filing for bankruptcy. Uh, now, the good thing here is if the judge says it's okay, they'll be able to go ahead and stay open, have events, keep their employees working until they transition under the new owners. 
So that's the good news there. Hopefully, we'll find out uh, something about that too. So we're going, okay. Almost 100 years. Yeah, we got good. We got the the yacht got club the opening. Open. They got the the country club. Not See? so much. They need sand in Dover. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the difference. That's the deal right there. Hey, we talked about it yesterday, but uh, it's worth talking about again. As far as we know, no rest yet. And all those arsons on the eastern shore of Virginia. This is mind-blowing. I, I cannot mm. believe that this is happening. Over 70, I think. Uh, 70 arsons, suspected arson. Tonight at 7. Here's how you can help. There's a prayer session being held at Nandua High School's auditorium. The session will be in the auditorium beginning at 7. It's a non-denominational get-together. The meeting itself and even the group organizing it don't even really have a name for it, but they just want people to come in and pray. Let's all get together. Yeah. Let's all get together. Get this Asking a higher power for over some help. Done with. Yeah. I want to touch this in real quick. This was something we were talking about this morning. A, a lot of people in broadcasting, radio, television uh, knew about this. Our condolences to the family of Mitch Scott. He was the president of Great Scott Broadcasting. If uh, you've ever listened to radio stations, The B, Joe FM, 93.5 The Beach, uh, OC 104 or big, you have listened to a Great Scott station. He lost his battle with leukemia hmm. Sunday. He was 56. So uh, going to be a lot of people in the Ocean City area miss him. He really got involved with philanthropy for the Ocean City Police Department and really got involved with the community. So yeah. our condolences to the family. I've only heard good things about him. I, I never actually got to meet him in all my years in radio here. I met him once. Yeah. I met him once. Never got to know him. Hmm. Quite a guy. You know, we were talking about, about the Mission of Mercy Dental Clinic that oh, went on yeah. this last weekend. This last weekend, yeah. I almost always try to pick out something funny from the grapevine in the Daily Times because it, it strikes me <laughs> when people can leave anonymous notes, it's almost silly what they'll write. This time, though, there was one in this morning's paper about the Mission of Mercy Dental Clinic. Take a look at this. Uh, it said, thank you to the dental community that so graciously donated its time to such a worthwhile cause. A special thanks to the hundreds of volunteers who so helpfully guided our way through the maze of workstations. This act of kindness was truly a blessing keep hope alive Aww. that was an awesome one that so, is an awesome one good stuff there I like that geek moment oh oh a geek moment for jimmy we need to have an alarm i know lights change we, weep, weep, weep. little beacon right. siren <laughs> stuff now you can't say it's all me orbital oh. sciences corporation announced their uh, they've got a target date for the first flight of the Antares rocket from Wallet's Flight Facility. Now, they usually do the sounding rockets, which right. really aren't that big. No. This thing's huge. This thing's huge. This is supposed to be a big event. This is a, a really big thing there. What they're doing is they're using, they're going to use this rocket to transport supplies to the International Space Station. Now, this is going to be a test flight. They're looking at the middle of April. Uh, company representatives say they're shooting for, uh, from Orbital Science, say they're shooting for those dates to conduct two missions to the space station in 2013. What they're going to do is they're going to have eight cargo resupply missions between late this year and 2016. So one would think with a rocket that size, pretty much anywhere, mm -hmm. at least over the, what, which bottom half of yeah, the peninsula, you yeah. could probably see it going up. Yeah, I didn't pay attention to any of that stuff you're talking about what it was going to do. I just want to see it take off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only geek here. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. You know what, what? I tell you what I am. I am a bookworm. I mm -hmm. love to read, and I love it when I hear about uh, local authors uh, getting a book published. Right, right. Uh, we want to wish best of luck to local author who just published his first novel. Cecil Johnson of Salisbury recently published The Lilacs of Fairview. Isn't that a pretty cover? It's a story of the struggle and the survival of a down-on-his-luck father and his young son. So congratulations nice. to Cecil. You. you know, um, there's a whole new world. I, mean, I don't know how new it is. I just discovered it of indie indie authors. Right. Basically, you know how you have indie music where they're not they don't sign on to a big uh, record, big record company. Level. Well, it kind of got the same thing with authors where they self-publish their books. And there's a lot of good stuff good. out there. Now I don't know if his is self-published or not, but Check it doesn't it matter in my book. <laughs> I like that. You like that? I, like I that didn't a lot. mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little something for you and the kids to do. It's a little bit different. Go out and have a little bit of fun. Volunteers are needed to count the horseshoe Aww. crabs in Delaware. And pet them, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They can never get enough attention. Uh, they're going to be counting them at Ted Harvey Wildlife Area, Kitts Hummock, as well as North Bowers Beach, and of course, all in Kent County, uh, for the annual spawning survey in May and June. So uh, we'll let you know more about how to get in on that and, get in and, there and count the crabs because they need to be. It astonishes me how many things can be done with horseshoe crabs I know. without killing them. 
Yeah, with their blood with and the, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Well, have you ever had one of those days where you felt like you were, for every step forward, you were taking two steps back? I feel like every other day is like that sometimes. <laughs> well, when that happens, just keep in mind this little guy. <laughs> Up we it go. probably wouldn't yeah, be so not. bad losing ground if it yeah, could not. just be the, that much fun yeah. sliding. Now, watch this guy. He just. Why are you watching me? Yeah. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is why is he so determined? Uh, What's uh, up no. there? What's why up does he there? want to get up there so bad? Maybe so he can yeah, slide you know back what? down. I, uh, no. You did that as a kid, didn't you? I did. You but went I didn't up have the wrong legs. way. Uh, ah. See ya. <laughs> 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 Always give it one more shot, even when somebody's laughing at you. <laughs> Just right. keep on trying. Just keep trying. Well, still to come on Delmarva Life, we all do what we can to protect our families. But could something as simple as opening an old window put them at harm? We'll find out why that may be the case, plus more on other household hazards you may not be aware of. And while we're talking about your home, it's almost time to take the fun outside. If warmer weather has you spending your days on the deck or porch, we're going to show you how you can bring the comfort of the inside outside. Plus, we'll share the perfect recipe for that warm spring or summer night. We're in the kitchen making a garlic grilled vegetable dinner. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back. Delmarva Life is brought to you by Sussex County Federal Credit Union, guiding you to your financial future. Peninsula Regional Medical Center, honored to serve the entire Delmarva Peninsula since 1897. Your local York and Mitsubishi dealers, and State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.